Yes, Bhutan is set to reopen Friday, but it's likely going to cost more to visit. The country has raised its daily sustainable development fee from $65 to $200. And that's per person per day. So a couple going to Bhutan for a week will spend just shy of $3,000 in fees alone. But that's not the only change. Bhutan used to have what it called a minimum daily package rate. This was an amount travelers had to spend every day, and it was between $200 to $250. But it often included all travel charges, from hotels to food to tour guides. Now that's over. Travelers can spend as little as they want when they get there, but they are on the hook for the $200 daily fee. So some aren't happy about this. They're calling it elitist and saying it effectively makes Bhutan a place that only the wealthy can visit. Others say it disproportionately affects tour companies that cater to budget travelers. Still more object to the timing, saying why now when the country's travel industry is still reeling from being closed for two and a half years. But others say the policy is brilliant. They say this is an effective way to guard against over-tourism and protect the local culture. The government has said the fees will be used for infrastructure and training within the travel industry, both which it says will benefit travelers in the long run. But the fees are also said to be going towards funding free education and health care for Bhutan citizens. So effectively, Bhutan is telling travelers, you can come, but it's going to be a two-way street. You can enjoy our country, but our people have to benefit as well. Back to you. Monica, uh, I can say from personal experience, I've been to Bhutan in 2006 with my wife on our honeymoon, and quite frankly, uh, the fees and the travel tax at that time, because the country wanted to uh, preserve its identity and its culture, and it didn't want saturation tourism, I personally was fine by that. Mm -hmm. So do you find that Bhutan is attracting a certain group of tourism uh, tourists who put sustainable tourism at a premium and don't mind paying for it? I don't know if we're finding that. I mean, we know that you have to really want to go there, and it's yes. not something that is, say, on the Asian backpacker trek because uh, you, you can't really just go for $30 a day the way that you can in other countries in Asia. Um, and as to whether less people will go, we don't really know. There's an argument for that, obviously, but some say that this higher rate may actually increase uh, the, the desire to go to Bhutan, if it's perceived as being a place that few people go and maybe only the wealthy can go to, that maybe yes. a certain pradash will make it, um, you know, some, similar to a Veblen good, which is those luxury goods that, that break the mold, that break the typical laws of supply and demand, that when the prices go up, actually demand follows. Uh, whether this happens to Bhutan, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, it's certainly possible. Monica, thank you very much indeed for that. Let's uh, continue this conversation with uh, Randy Durband, who is the CEO of uh, the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, an NGO created by the United Nations. He joins us from Suwon City in South Korea. Randy, great to see you. Does Bhutan lead the way then? And does sustainable tourism then inevitably come at a premium price? No, I don't think sustainability has to come at a premium price. Uh, a strong case can be made that all of mainstream mass travel can be far more sustainable. Um, so Bhutan, I think, is a, is a rather special case. The issue, though, Randy, as I see it, is uh, that that's all well and good, but uh, travellers and uh, tourists have to understand and uh, be respectful and practice sustainability themselves. So how do you get that message across? Well, you know, Bhutan, again, I think is a special case. And let's not forget that Bhutan is extremely remote. You know, they pre-COVID, they had 250,000 visitors per year. Um, Los Angeles gets 50 million in a year. Um, we're talking about a very tiny fraction, and we're talking about a model that works for them. You know, I spent 40 years in travel and tourism, 25 years as an outbound tour operator and 15 years in sustainability. And I've never, and I've been to Bhutan and I, we did a technical review 2015 or 16. Uh, we know some, we know quite a bit about the situation. Honestly, we never really saw travelers complain. Now that it's gone up, there could be some alleg allegations of elitism and so forth. But just keep in mind, it's very difficult to get to Bhutan. They've only ever been able to have this program because basically they only apply it to people flying in. The Indians could always drive in without any of these restrictions. And so if you can afford the flight, usually from Bangkok, you can't fly from Singapore or many places in the world. If you can right. afford the flight, you could afford the old fee and nobody was complaining. So, yeah, maybe we'll see with the increased fee, some allegations. But yet the type of traveler they've 
attracted is the type of traveler who wants to be responsible, who wants an authentic culture of such a unique culture in such a unique and remote place as Bhutan. They might get away with it, but uh, as you were saying, uh, we, we really don't know. Time will tell. Good morning, Randy. Uh, Monica here. So Bhutan has often been viewed as a place that is punched above its weight in terms of sustainability initiatives. But it is, like you said, you know, it's very different than other countries. It's small. Uh, it's largely rural. It you know, has less than a million people. What can other economies, say larger economies that are contributing far more uh, to, say, you know, the carbon problems of the world, what, what can other economies take from or learn from what the initiatives that Bhutan has employed? To be candid, not much, because, I mean, how do you control the entry point the way Bhutan can? Any other country, okay, maybe Singapore has limited access to come in, but most countries, you can drive in from myriad points, you can fly into myriad airports, you can take rail in, <clears throat> you can't control it. So I think it highlights the fact that travel is extremely complex to manage. And so um, business, com governments, governments in most countries of the world need a very holistic approach to how they uh, attract travel, how they manage travel uh, to the various, uh, you know, visitors that come. It's, it's extremely complex. Bhutan, in a sense, has it easy. They can control because of that very limited access.